Welcome to a sold-out Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville, home of the number one team in college basketball, the Tennessee Volunteers, who today take on the Kentucky Wildcats. The Vols on pace to win their first outright SEC title in 41 years. Kentucky with the win will move into a first-place tie. A lot to play for today. And hi again, everybody, with Bill Raftery, Kevin Harlan. Thank you so much for joining us. What a week it's been for Tennessee. Arguably the three toughest games in a row you may ever have. Memphis number one. What do you do emotionally in a situation like this? You play a great game, and then you come back against Vandy, who played a terrific game. Now you're a little bit down, but you've got Kentucky to prepare for. And oh my goodness, they still wear the tuxedo. They're the team to get in the conference. What a devastating loss on Friday. The centerpiece of their entire team, freshman Patrick Patterson, out with a stress fracture. Well, you know, the numbers are incredible for a young guy, but what he brings to the table, he makes everybody better. And when you think of it, without him, someone's going to have to step up. And who better than Ramel Bradley, a guy that's going to have to make a lot of decisions against the full court press. Will he beat it? Will he make good decisions? Will he kick it? Will he get to the rim? Or will he take the deep one, Kevin? We'll see. One of the great names in college basketball, Kentucky, against number one, Tennessee, comes your way next on CBS. CBS Sports College basketball coverage is sponsored by Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. By Coca-Cola. And by Chevrolet, an American revolution. The fall away three, good! Chris Lofton. Off to Crawford for the tie, yes! Gets to the free throw line with a jumper, good! Cats lead, and the Cats have upset the Tennessee Volunteers. Moments ago, out of the stands came the number one team in college basketball, the Volunteers of Tennessee. Let's take a look at our Liberty Mutual starting lineups. The coach is Billy Gillespie of the Kentucky Wildcats, took his A&M team of Texas a season ago to the Sweet 16. He's got the seniors, Ramel Bradley and Crawford in the backcourt. They will be vital today. Curry flanked with Jasper, who starts for Patterson, and the sophomore, Ramon Harris. Now for Tennessee with Smith, Smith, and the defending Southeastern Conference Player of the Year, Chris Lofton, with Tyler Smith and Chisholm up front. And Bruce Pearl took this Tennessee team to a Sweet 16 as well a season ago here in Knoxville. Our officials today, Doug Shows, Anthony Jordan, and J.B. Caldwell. I'd like to remind you, today's game is being brought to you in HDTV by the Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high-definition television and mobile media with Bill Raftery, Kevin Harlan. Kentucky Bill has won 9 of 10, four straight. Everything was centered around Patterson. Now he is gone. Big adjustment on the fly, but they feel they've had a couple of days to adjust. And here we go. And right now, Kevin Harlan, Kentucky goes, in a minute, and a big turnover and no walk call. You know the Kentucky's calling card is defense. Yeah, they've got to do a solid job. And you know Tennessee's going to try and up-tempo it. There's Ramel Bradley, who's out of New York City, picked up by Jawan Smith. Jasper is kind of the new guy now to focus on for the Wildcats. The senior Crawford is double down low. Nice kick, and they're going to be patient on offense. Down to 10. They are not going to be in a hurry, Kevin, but this is how they're playing. Yeah, exactly, but more so today. Not a good look. Knocked away by Tyler Smith. And picked up by Jawan Smith. Now here is Chris Lofton. Oh, pretty. And that's all Lofton. They had a run out on Lofton. It opens up the passing lane. A great delivery. Tyler Smith puts in the first two today for the Tennessee Volunteers. Coming off the loss to top 20 Vanderbilt earlier in the week. Big thing, there'll be no adjustment on the block. There are no doubles. Everybody will be playing straight up. Tennessee can attack the perimeter people. With the shot clock down to eight, here is Crawford picked up by Chisholm and now by Lamar Smith, and inside it goes to Curry. A walk-on for this Kentucky team, who is fouled by Chisholm on the play, who picks up his first for the Volunteers. And Kevin, you can see how they have to run out of Lofton. Two tried to play him, a terrific rearrangement under the rim. Just a solid delivery. Whew. What an addition Smith's been, huh? Iowa, 
and then the transfer because his dad was not well. NCAA very humane and determining that factor so he's eligible to play. He's had a great year for them. So here is Curry, the sophomore from Detroit. He's a walk-on over the same high school in the Detroit area as Shane Battier and Chris Weber. His dad played college basketball at Wayne State, so he's got a great pedigree. He starts games. He doesn't see a lot of minutes for the Wildcats. No, it's one of those fake fronts. They started playing well, and they go with it. Why not? Kentucky began this season at 6 and 7. Coming into this afternoon, 16 and 10. Now, Billy Gillespie known for great man, to man defense. Real solid. A little soft at top, but they toughen up in the scoring area. Nice delivery. Into Chisholm. Here's it by both Curry and Ramon Harris, and a foul goes on the Kentucky Wildcats with about a minute and a half gone. This one goes on Mark Curry, who picks up his first for UK. I see Tennessee very patient. They'll use the inside, soften you up. They can kick out, ball reversal. A lot of duck-ins on the box. Here's the Iowa transfer. Tyler Smith. Chisholm has it, a sophomore. Mm, too easy. Right across the lane into Curry. Wow. He bounces that much. Somebody's got to come down and rake. Here's Ramal Bradley. And out to Jasper. One of the things that Kentucky will rely on today with that pressure defense of Tennessee will be those two senior guards getting it across midcourt and getting into their offense a little bit early. And they want to attack if they can. Nice screen and curl by Bradley. Good defense by Tyler Smith on the shot by Bradley. Picked up by Chisholm, and here comes Tennessee. Juwan Smith, unbelievable range. Catch and shoot. Rebound by the former Alaska High School Player of the Year, Ramon Harris. He starts as a sophomore. And we'll see now more time with Patterson out. Three feet inside, Jasper to Harris, and he comes up with two. Jasper's such an important ingredient. Coming off that knee injury, miraculous recovery. And once again, Jawan Smith on the fly. And Crawford couldn't handle him. He was going at such speed down that baseline. And a nice seal by Chisholm to keep Curry away from assisting. In a lot of ways, this Tennessee offense and defense reminds you of what Rick Pitino used to run at Kentucky in the very, 90s. Very much so. And they keep coming. The only thing is they don't attack after the initial trap. That second wave. Here's right. Crawford for three. Late close out by Lamar Smith and picked up by Chris Lofton from Maysville, Kentucky. Floats inside. Hit by Jasper in a foul. And Derek Jasper will pick it up. Jasper the sophomore out of California. Anytime a guy has that much time and that talented, he's going to put you away. Take the luggage with him and here, little kiss. The nice screen by Chisholm. Doing a little bit on that offensive end. So here's Chris Lofton, the reigning Southeastern Conference Player of the Year, led the conference in scoring a season ago, but Bill, I think it would surprise some people. He is only 14th this year, and that's not that his play has decreased, although probably not as good as a season ago. He's just got a lot of things around him now, more options. I think the team is a lot better, and you're right. There's people in the low post that can do some damage. They attack him. He's willing to give it up. And the one thing Bruce was talking about last year as well as today to both of us, his ability with the dribble has improved his game and helped him to contribute. Curry has checked out for Kentucky, and they have brought in the guy that they're going to count on a lot now, Patterson out, Perry Stevenson. Here comes J.P. Prince. He'll check in for Lofton. And Prince is going to play some point guard today for Tennessee. Also, Duke Cruz is coming the game for the Tennessee Volunteers. And there's that initial trap, and they back it off. Uh, Prince really playing good basketball against Memphis. He was solid. No turnaround jumper in the post. He also going to put it on the deck. Prince at 13 against Memphis. Terrific performance. Second half, he was great in beating then number one Memphis. 13 second half points. Look Harris. at this opening. Harris inside for Stevenson. Not the way. Shot clock down to 12. A great effort defensively. That's really helping your partner. Stepping in. Ramar Smith. Real solid. Of course, Billy Gillespie. Such a good defensive coach himself. Here you think you got to do. So look at the protection from the top. Great hustle. Harris to inbound. Prince jumping up in front. Jasper's got it. Down to 10. I'm not so sure they're aware. Duke Cruz is on Jasper. You're right. Now they start playing at the Kentucky bench. And here's the move by Jasper. Keeping it alive is Tyler Smith. And here comes Tennessee. And Tennessee plays with a chip on their shoulder. And Bruce feels, hey, listen, you're playing Kentucky. They get another open look. They stretch the defense. Lamar Smith that time. Are there enough Smiths for you, Kevin? A lot of them. <laughs> but they're all good. Uh, and they can all pass. And they're not fictitious either. <laughs> Jawan Smith has got five. 
He leads them in scoring so far today. Stevenson. Ramel Bradley. That's an offensive foul. And Ramel Bradley of Kentucky, taken by Jawan Smith. A great preparation by Tennessee. The flare screen, they responded. And then the great defense on the baseline. But Kevin, how about this kick? You got to come out and guard him. A little nylon. Read it here in Knoxville. He's Coach's Corner. Hot topics, candid comments, and only on your AT&T handset. This week, the top college coaches around the country discuss recruiting stories. I think that's the hardest thing about recruiting now is to scout the personality and the character of the kid that you're getting because not every personality is going to mesh with mine. Access CV on your wireless AT&T phone to watch the complete Coach's Corner video and exclusive NCAA March Madness highlights. CBS Sports and Facebook are bringing you the largest bracket competition on the web. Prove you're an expert and get started now at Facebook.com slash brackets or CBSSports.com slash brackets. With Bill Raftery, Kevin Harlan. You know, if you're Bruce Pearl, how do you get your team going? I know you're number one. I know you've lost. You may drop in the polls after this, but you are playing Kentucky today. It's like talking to Oral Roberts. I mean, he is so <laughs> motivationally inclined. He gets his kids up saying, hey, Kentucky didn't recruit any of you. You know, you are at Tennessee. They did not recruit you. He got me so excited. I almost asked him to get me a pair of his <laughs> no. orange suspenders. But, I but then, you thought, then you thought about it. Yeah. Now nah, you keep his suspenders. He looks better than those than I do. Neither team made a change out of that break. Tyler Smith can't get it. And that helps a quick check. You know, they've been doing a nice job inside. This is the guy that's got to get on track. Crawford, very good around the rim. And Stevenson comes up with the loose ball and puts it in. So Crawford gets the penetration, which they will need. And they need Stevenson to clean up the misses, as he did right there. A little soft out top. And look at this catch and shoot. That's unbelievable range. Jawan Smith with the miss three. He hit one earlier. Jasper. Ramon Harris flies off the wing. Crawford comes up with another offensive rebound. Saved by Harris. Picked up by Cruz. Ahead to Jawan Smith. And here comes Prince. And he traveled. Trying to make the pass before he caught an unselfish play. But Harris has got to finish around the rim for Kentucky. Unfortunately, it, not himself. As, as he gets to the rim here, it's almost too easy for him. But they are scrappy, Tennessee. They fight you for everything. The, and suing save leads to the open floor opportunity. Tennessee goes eight deep. They may play as deep a rotation as any team in the country. Yeah, they are solid. Rotate up top. They can play smaller if they want. Chisholm is back in. Great pressure. They got five. a five-second call. Well, wow, that's unusual from this side of the floor to have it called. And Bruce. Pretty happy with his defensive uh, beginning here. It's Patrick Vanderson, the West Virginia High School Player of the Year. It came down to Duke and Florida and Kentucky and really got the job after leaving AM and went right out to West Virginia to start recruiting this kid. He got him, and he's been, like we said before, the centerpiece of their whole team and certainly a reason why they're as good as they are. I met him on his trip to Florida, oh. his recruiting trip, and we talked a little bit earlier. A great attitude, and this is that soft perimeter trying to make it tough inside. How about that reaction? Duke Cruz, a sophomore from Hampton, Virginia, went to the same high school as Allen Iverson. And has an Iverson-like move inside. And he attacks the offensive glass, too. He can put it on the deck as they all can. Here is Jasper at the microfracture surgery. Came back on New Year's Eve. Kentucky season hasn't been the same since. Three feet inside. It was Harris looking for Jasper, who was shoved in a foul called inside. On Tennessee, it goes on Ramar Smith. Jasper, very good without the ball. But you can see, and not tough on the harassing of the passer. They give that open opportunity to a guy like Cruz and overcoming some difficulties in the hard area early in the year. And gives you some toughness, some ball yeah. handling. See, he sees, to play. Yeah, sees the court so well. Near the end of today's game, we'll select the Chevy player of the game from each team to honor the determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Chevy and American Revolution. Just for again. Now this kid really is terrific with the bounce. We talked to Billy Gillespie. He uses that left. He feels because of the knee, he's much better going to his left. Kentucky 2 2 from the free throw line. They are the number one free throw shooting team in the Southeastern Conference coming in. Bradley and Crawford reasons why. See, Chisholm there, way out, nice double screen to give this guy a look. Oh, no one in the history of the 
Southeastern Conference has made and attempted more threes than Chris Lofton. And a turnover on the inbound. Williams is screened for Ramar Smith. And the 6'10 Williams almost had it. Lofton with a tear drop. That'll make you cry for the opponent. Oh. They come in spurts. And you got to be careful if you're Kentucky. Bradley with the mismatch now working on Chisholm. Now, great patience by Bradley. They don't want to get into a running game here. Stevenson got the intro pass from Crawford. They got steps. Yep, he did. Another traveling violation. Much to the glee of second-year, third-year head coach Bruce Pearl. Uh, you know, Billy, we will screen the screener. You know, Billy Gillespie prepared for this double screen. Nobody gets over the top. Nobody shows. And then right away, they get into that press and make you cough it up and pay for it. Nice front by Jasper. Great steal, intercepted by Derek Jasper. Started last year, had the knee, of course, this year, and taking his place this year was Ramel Bradley, who Jasper replaced a season ago. Now they're both on the floor at the same time, and they need both. We talked about Tennessee having a very deep rotation. Kentucky doesn't play that many guys. No, not at all. Of course, they're going to have to do a great job, particularly on the perimeter. Chisholm with a great hustle play to knock it out of bounds. Cross screen, and then they lock in there. This is the number one defensive team in the Southeastern Conference, Tennessee, and the number one offensive team as well, the Volunteers. Pretty good combo. Not bad. <laughs> that's the record, 11-2 and two in conference play. And Lofton's done a nice job, and oh, that's a pretty steal. He shut Bradley down, contained him, and then went over, put that hand in, deflected. I know this week that Bruce Pearl said we need better point guard play from our team. In fact, both coaches said we need better passing from our respective teams. Passing, such a big deal, of course, with teams that are a little bit smaller. These teams fit that category. Right, well, you want that extension, guys, to know what you're thinking. It was Billy Gillespie. What an outstanding job early in the year. They struggled. It's been chronicled. Got them playing great basketball. Josh Tabb has come in for Tennessee. And a chance to play for the title. Nice front. Chisholm does a great job in his footwork. Williams, Jasper blows by him. Picked up by Chisholm. Nice step over by Chisholm. Look at this handle. Chisholm picks up his second rebound. He can do so. The back screen gets him to the block. Williams up front. A formidable screener, would you say, Kevin? Absolutely. Tab, a sophomore from Illinois. The drive and the pickup inside by Jasper. See what Jasper does. He plays everything. 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 Fills it up. Stats stuffer. As Clark Kellogg would say. Uh, Stevens is going to have a harder time scoring. They usually are playing everybody tough with Patterson not in the game. Kentucky two field goals and five turnovers so far. Crawford outside. Tough. Another Kick. offensive foul. Got to be alert. Crawford. Crawford picks it up. They'll need him today against the number one team in college basketball. Look at Lofton taking the two from the Kentucky defense and come up with two. Well, you see the banners up here in the Thompson Bowling Rafters. Uh, Bernard King's name, and of course there's Ray Mears, the, the great coach of Tennessee. In the background there, you see Ernie Grunfeld. They're going to retire his number today. Two-time All-America, Bernard King there in the foreground. Ernie had his uh, family with him all weekend long. It's been a terrific time. A little uh, ceremony last night. And of course, the, the retirement, the hanging of his jersey and name here at halftime today. A great administrator, great player. Had a chance to play against him when Ernie and Bernie were together. His wife Nancy there on his left, his daughter, Rebecca. But uh, he told me a great story. He said Ray Mears calls Stu Aberdeen late at night one night. And I was there. I said, Jesus, he was there at 1 o'clock. He said, that's baloney. One of the nights I was out on the town, I, I saw the light on. I went up to the office. Stu Aberdeen wasn't there. He used to leave the light on at night. <laughs> good decoy. Good it was. Camouflage, yeah. Fooled a lot of people. Ramar Smith inside to tab. Rejected by Harris. Picked up by Ramar Smith again. Who is relentless in attacking the rim today? Well, they really do a great job bodying you under the rim. And of course, Kentucky not big. And without Patterson, not as effective. 9 nothing run by Tennessee right now. Look at this denial where they forced the catch. Up high, foul called on Tab. He picks up his first personal foul. Well, he picked up the Tab on that one. Huh? That was a nickel-dimer, <laughs> my goodness. But here, you look at all the white shirts, four of them under the rim, and the able to 
finish and uh, of course this guy part of that reason not able to dominate even intimidating with shot blocking assisting and obviously clearing the glass Patrick Patterson almost touched every possession yeah, at least once they went through him and he made great decisions forced doubles forced decisions by the defense here's Crawford and the sophomore tab is on him boy they're really helping on Bradley he can't turn the corner he's usually very good around the rim the drive by Harris outside Crawford for three. The Southeastern Conference's sixth leading score. Crawford can't put it in. And what defense by Tennessee. They have been terrific. Tyler Smith. Current Southeastern Conference player of the week is Smith. And then it was Juwan Brandt, uh, Smith inside trying to get it going. But Tyler Smith has been terrific. And Bill kind of touched on his story out of Pulaski, Tennessee. Second foul goes on Crawford for the Kentucky Wildcats. Crawford picks up his second. Yeah, but Juwan Smith just out-toughed him on that rebound. I mean, that was a loose ball, 50-50. You got to come up with that when you're struggling. Juwan Smith from Cleveland, Tennessee. Now, against Kentucky a season ago, had a career-high 25 points, knocked down five threes, and Cruz will come in for Brian Williams. Juwan Smith, a walk-on here a few years ago. He was a counselor at LeBron Skills Academy. I can't believe his range and his mm. blow by. And I said, you know, what's the reason a lot of people don't talk about it? The Bruce is that once in a while he'll be inconsistent and give you a big game and then maybe step off a little bit. So that's what they're looking for from him. Who isn't looking for consistency? Yeah, exactly. Huh? Nice double screen. It was indeed by both Harris and by Stevenson Bradley. Look at the cover though, Kevin. They really react. They fight through it, don't they? Now Stevenson has been able to make that little jumper, but they're not giving it to him where they would with Patterson in the game. Tenacious head of the key defense by this Tennessee team. The shot clock is down to seven. Bradley again working around a Stevenson screen. Ramel Bradley takes it inside on Cruz. And picked up by Ramar Smith. Kentucky hasn't hit from the field in over five minutes. Ramar Smith on the fly. Picked up by Stevenson. Nice. That was a great play by Stevenson. Feet pass to Crawford with a charge. That's a heads-up play by the big guy. You start initiating that defense at midcourt, just slows the whole process down. And they really coordinate. They showed on the last trip. They zoned up in the back. Here comes the double again, and a pretty good response. That's Stevenson shot. left open because they went over on the side of Jasper and picked up by Ramar Smith. Now pick your option, and he would be one of the guys you'd like to shoot it. If you're Tennessee. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And I think this kid's got a really nice game. He's got to get confidence. Oh, look at Tyler Smith trying his way inside. Stevenson had a hand on it. They play a little twist on the floor. Tied up. And a timeout. Got to give a timeout. Let's see. Now they give a foul. Oh, coming over the top. Cruz, I believe. I think Cruz got the foul. Number one on Cruz. Uh, I'm sure the Kentucky fans are wondering why they can't initiate any offense, but as they end up getting a ball screen here, just watch the show, and then in the back, how they cover. I mean, that's just exquisite. Forcing the turnover, then the ensuing run out. Great basketball. Bradley trying to sneak it inside. Looked like Lofton who just checked in. The game was on Crawford's back. He was, and a foul called on Chris Lofton, number two. Yeah, that hurts. I mean, he's trying to deny, but you get that right arm. Almost like the cornerback with the receiver, you know, you hold on. And there's no five yards to do it either. I mean, your whole court is where you've got to look. Sure. But it was light, though. I mean, it was not, but he runs just in and he gets a second personal foul. A little, little nickel dimer, but again, Crawford trying to establish some low foul, like what Billy Gillespie did. Take advantage of his talent and leave him alone under there, much like they would Patterson. Crawford. There you go. That's a three, and it was right over Jawan Smith. And, you know, if you keep playing in our patient, the defense will soften because they're reversing the ball, forcing them to work side to side. Remember now, the first game, Tennessee had a season low of 66 points. Oh, what a great pass by Prince playing some point guard today inside the Tyler Smith. What a great dive, but Prince just showing so much talent. Former Arizona guy, local guy out of Memphis. Down he at White tough. Station High School in Memphis, they won three straight state championships. And I think he may have taught him a little free throw shooting, but that's the most, <laughs> the only short coming he had. Nice hesitation, dribble and dive. Got to finish. But Stevenson caught it mid-stride. The penetration is what Kentucky's looking for. The foul goes on Cruz for a second time. Well, the prince of the court here, uh, the ability to see people and then to read. I mean, that's just a great acknowledgement. You can see how weak that interior defense was with very few blue shirts in the neighborhood. You know, it's great watching these college players, and especially the younger players, is how they work off the ball. Huh? 
their attention, their patience, their attention to detail off the ball. You know, I think the difference between years ago and now is that came a little more naturally. Mm -hmm. Now it's taught more. Uh, the playground that we knew as young guys, kids learn, it's more organized. So guys are doing drills to read situations. We always hear these college coaches talk about reading. Can my guy read what's going on? Read the floor. I know that Billy Gillespie told us before the game that's one of the best things that Jasper does. Mm -hmm. He reads the floor so well. You know, great knowledge of the game. Let's see, they go a little bit of a zone here. No, still man. Jordan Howell has checked in for the first time for Tennessee. Senior from Auburn, Alabama. Chisholm picked up by Stevenson. Nice reversal. And Prince is wide open because everyone was sagging down low. See, Prince had that little five-footer, tried to get closer to the rim. Drill that. Kentucky is 3 of 12 shooting. Tennessee is 9 of 20 shooting today, and a foul on the perimeter. Well, you don't want to foul that far out. Tyler Smith yeah. picks it up, and that is number one on him. You can watch right here a great laser-like pass from Prince into Tyler Smith. Let's now take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. You see the numbers, the shooting, the three-point hits, the turnovers. Plus eight points in the paint for Tennessee, pretty important. They're pretty tough inside, though, because, of course, turnovers are forcing, but all of a sudden you get the feeling Kentucky reversing the ball a little right. bit better, running screens, they slip Crawford into the low box. You've got to be patient, but you've also got to attack them somewhat. They look like the number one team so far, don't they? Well, they really do. I mean, I'm so impressed with their defensive skills, showing and covering for one another. And down the other end, they can pound it in, but they also have people who can step in and shoot jump shots. Uh, he'll be buying a few orange jackets if this keeps up, <laughs> let me tell you. How about his personality? He is a go-getter, a, a, a endless energy. In fact, I, I brought up the Patino offense and defense of the 90s. Comparing it to what Tennessee does right now. We talk about a comparison of the coaches in this endless, boundless energy. I mean, that's kind of a pearl. He's kind of a showman, a flair, a, a charisma. He's got a little barn in belly. Yes, I just can't picture him with that, without a shirt on, though. <laughs> Appeared here at one of the women's games. Uh, I know Sands you... clothing uh, sort of set him back a little bit, at least in my eyes. We're on Summit, <laughs> We're on summit Court. Pat Summit, the women's coach, talked to the team yesterday at that mid-court stripe about playing for conference championships, taking on a, a rival like mm -hmm. Kentucky and everything that they bring to the game. Here's how. This is where it's going to start for Kentucky. Stops and seal the deal with rebound. Nice ball. Oh, oh, Cross over by Juwan Smith. How about that? Oh, Disdaining a the ball screen. And, you know, you work at it in practice. Look at me. He goes over the top. I want you to show. <laughs> you fight your way over top. And all of a sudden, the ball oh, fake. How about that? Lingerie on the deck. Everything but. Oh, is that pretty? Unfortunately, ineffective at the rim. Well, Tennessee today cannot clinch an outright title. But this would certainly put them in a terrific position to do so. Something they have not done in the Southeastern Conference in 41 years, mm -hmm. going back to 1967. Orange coat, by the way, in tribute to Ray Mears, who, uh, when Bruce Pearl said, well, Coach, when did you wear the, the orange? Is that award against a couple teams? Uh, and then you think of Don DeVoe came in later. Yes. I mean, Jerry Green, I mean, Peterson. I mean, they've had some really good coaches. And Bruce felt 19 teams went to the NCAA here the year before he came. The only one that didn't is basketball. He yep. thought it could be done. He was right. And here's the pressure, almost forcing the timeout. They got numbers now. Bradley with Crawford trailing. That's what they want to do. Attack it, get some easy ones. Don't put so much pressure on that half-court offense. You can only imagine the emotional wrecking ball this injury to Patterson did to this team oh. I mean, earlier this week. Here's Chisholm uncovered. And that's what makes him tough. I mean, he can step out. They've been playing him soft, or soft late. Yes. And he can counter with a dribble and also an inside game. What a tough matchup. But what does Billy tell his team? You lose this, the, the, the guy that really your team kind of hinges on. Uh, you know, he said it was like business as usual. Let's move forward. Let's play with what we have. And that's the way they've approached this game. Got a little bit of a hole early, but playing with a lot more confidence right now. Each team stretching out their legs here a little bit. Six and a half to play in the half. Nice showing big by Prince. Ramon Harris with aggressive play inside. <laughs> no one touched him. Now Kentucky has scored 
on its last five consecutive possessions. And you give a road team a little bit of confidence, a place where they've had success in the past, and go a long way. Well, anytime you can beat them with the dribble, and that softens things up for all your other approaches. Tough J. match. J.P. Prince. Tough match inside for Jasper, and that's where it hurts. He tried to check out. Just too oh, hard. Smith is such a finger inside. So strong. 6'7". He leads the team in rebounding. Tyler Smith also leads the team in assists. Well, he really bounces and finds people. Nice use of the screens here. Nobody on the glass, though. Oh, six consecutive scores right now for Kentucky. And you don't get back. Nice pop. Jawan Smith. Ooh. That's a tough call. Play is over. 5.35 to play here in the first half. That's the third foul on Crawford. How about this? Anything you can do off that dribble really helps everybody. Sets up screens, and now as you get to the rim, the understanding and confidence to deliver that little crawler softly. Crawford now with three. Talk with Billy Gillespie. Let me get back to your question, though. Billy just approaches practice in the game. Whoever is here, let's go. And I think that's what the kids have done coming in here. You know, tough environment here, 20,000. What a great place to view a basketball game. Now, this guy's a keeper. He's going to have a long, successful run at you know, Kentucky. He, he was saying, Bill, that, that one of the things this team adopted about midseason was to take it one game at a time, one goal at a time. He said sometimes teams are, are looking so far ahead they don't see what's right in front mm -hmm. of them. He said our team changed the mentality. We were 9-9, nine and nine, one at Georgia. From that point on, they've really taken off to the point now where they won nine of their last ten as Crawford will check out. And they bring in Porter, Michael Porter, who is a sophomore from Modesto, California. Can stick it once in a while. A married member of the team. Executive maturity, by the way, I'm not sure. Well, he hasn't reached here. Look, look at us. <laughs> right. Full court pressure again. Timeout, Kentucky. Five and a half to play in the half here at the Thompson Bowling Arena. little who's who in college basketball coaching. How about that when you look back, because Joe B. Hall, 78 won it all. And Ricky P came in, of course Eddie there and <laughs> moved on, but Ricky inherited a team that was struggling and Tubby got his championship and Billy, well, down the road, uh, he feels very confident about the kids they've recruited and what they have going. And in his mind, it's almost setting an agenda the way he wants things accomplished. Hard-nosed defense. Good selection on the other end. Bite you once in a while with the fast break. Porter will put it in play. Bradley can't get free. Now he does. Shaking off Jawan Smith. And you know, he ran the baseline. And they had him down with the ball. That was a violation. Not call. Yeah. Unless they deemed the whistle was before the ball was inbounded. Bradley facing double pressure on top. Here's Ramon Harris. Chisholm on him. Well, they can do some damage inside with Jasper, I think, eventually, with Howe. Shot clock is at five. Again, more penetration down the middle. And that's a foul counted for two. And Jasper to the free throw line for the Wildcats. How good is this kid playing? And I talked about him earlier, recovering from the knee. He can stick it deep. Great with the handle. Not afraid to get to the rim. How about this adjustment? A little sleight of hand with the southpaw. But the success is coming when they penetrated the lane. Absolutely. And I think it's deployment, too. Now, with Patterson not in there, in the low box area, that's going to be an open place to roam. Chisholm picks up his second foul for Tennessee. Kentucky has scored on seven consecutive possessions. Crawford is on the bench with three Kentucky fouls. Oh, they really recover to the shooter. Look at how open everybody gets. Josh Tab from Tyler Smith. Rebound by Stevenson. I mean, it's not just losing a player like Patterson. It's for the entire team to adapt to a guy that they no longer have, who, as you said before, the ball always went through. Well, when you get the ball, you're not closely guarded frequently, or a guy is rotating out on you, so you can put it down or pump fake or get the open look if he doesn't close fast enough. How on Bradley. Bradley very good with the dribble as well. See if he gets to the ball screen. Look how far back he is, though. There's a screen by Stevenson. Tried to pick and roll. It disappeared. Shot clock at three. Harris tried to drive. Good Tennessee defense. Kentucky, 7-16. Tennessee, 10-24. How inside. Now very confident with the dribble. And this week on The Late Show with David Letterman, Dave's got Tom Hanks, Howard Stern, Denzel Washington, plus tomorrow, 
You can catch Kate Hudson and Jack Hanna's animals only on CBS at the free throw line is Howell, who was a recruited kid out of Auburn, Alabama. He initially signed with Georgia. He got out of that. He comes to Tennessee. And it's interesting. His brother played at Auburn. His dad played at Auburn. His uncle played at Auburn. They all wore number 15. Howell wears number 15 for Tennessee. And he's from Auburn. And he's from oh, Auburn. Right. Alabama. The kid gets 18 minutes, plays with a lot of confidence. They really look for him to stick that kick-out jumper. But he's been struggling with this shot. Yeah, he has. Howell, so he's kind of lost some minutes here, and Prince has taken him. Well, Prince not in right now. Tab is in there with uh, Lamar. Good help. Great rejection. Terrific reaction by Stevenson. Peter gets a, almost two blocks a game. That's his uh, first block today. He had five against this team the first time they met. Now, he's got to do a job on the offensive glass, too. If he screens, get to the rim, see if he can get a little tip or follow. He's at the rim now. Screen by Stevenson, the switch on defense. Here's Brandon. Here, shot clock is down to seven. They're looking for a late ball screen again. Bradley for three. Good! Oh, what a shot by Ramel Bradley with the defender Tam right in his grill. Great defense by Tam. 9-2 run by Kentucky. 6-10 Williams. Oh, and he got it. Well, he was fouled on the play by Stevenson. What did Bruce say? He lost 100 pounds from when he first met him. He's 265 now, so you can imagine when he looked at three, ooh, three and a quarter, three and a couple quarters. A felt look, <laughs> and he can pound you inside. They take advantage of the big fella. Kentucky playing tough. With shots like this from Ramel Bradley, 31-22 Tennessee. Fans, a reminder, access CV on your wireless AT&T phone to watch the complete Coach's Corner video and exclusive NCAA March Madness highlights. AT&T Coach's Corner. Coming up at AT&T in the half during Greg Gumbel and Seth Davis for all the scores and highlights. And a look at how the Indiana Hoosiers have adjusted to the new head coach, plus an AT&T Naismith watch update. That's all coming up on the AT&T at the half from our CBS studios in New York. Kentucky started the game 2 of 11 from the field. They've gone 6 of 6 since. At one time, Kentucky was 20% below in field goal percentage to Tennessee. Now they're plus 5, 47% for the Cats. 42% for the balls. And Billy changed the look. He went to that high ball screen. They became very effective, still controlling the clock, and yet ending up with a good one. Of course, Bradley's deep. Jack, extraordinary late with three seconds on the shot clock. Jawan Smith leads Tennessee with nine and four rebounds. Seven for Chris Lofton. Six points for Ramon Harris with three rebounds, leading Kentucky. A lot of balance for this Kentucky Wildcat team. Porter is in because of three fouls on Crawford. Tam remains on him. You don't want to, they had eight turnovers early. They gotta be sound on this end. It continues with the ball screen and show, and Stevenson at the rim, inside position. Bradley couldn't get it, Tam cleans the glass. Triggers it quickly. Ramar Smith. Brian Williams. How about the big guy? Oh, huh? a little dance inside. Rebounded yeah. inside by Ramon Harris. A little discard by the big fella. <laughs> He has some derriere. <laughs> All paid for. Good base. Exactly. There's Stevenson again, just doing what they're asking. Giving the guards an opportunity to turn the corner or at least make some decisions. Here they go again. And running the clock down every possession. Yeah, it's, it's really worked. Bradley. Harris. Shot clock at nine. Jasper with the screen, the switch on defense. Now he's got Ramar Smith on it. Harris over Tyler Smith. Good! That's another three! Can you beat it? They got exactly both things they wanted. Late in the shot clock and ringing the bell. Look at the former high school player of the year in Alaska, Ramon Smith. He has got nine points. Trajan Langley comes to mind. Yes, he does. Now Mario Chalmers at Kansas. Now, Chalmers at Kansas, absolutely. A couple former Alaska players of the year. Ramar Smith, rebound by Jasper. They got numbers if they want. Jasper, Bradley, screen. Rebounding in this game is tied. They've had great self-control. Uh, nothing frivolous at the end of a break. Controlling tempo. Exactly what Billy said. When they switch on defense a lot, don't oh, they? Oh, they're not afraid to because they're real mobile. Oh, 
A different defensive face as it seems in their face every time. I would bring Williams up all the time. He doesn't have the foot speed to cover. Look at Bradley. That's his step back. That's his favorite little move, usually in the foul area. 14 to 5, Kentucky run. And Bradley has put in seven. And they got five on four now with Williams counting the house. No lumber back, but you're right. Here comes Bradley. And a oh, no. An offensive foul. Wow, I didn't see the arm, but I don't believe it. Wow. So while Kentucky has caught fire, look at Tennessee. Three of their last 15, they've grown cold from the field. Well, Doug sees it here. I mean, that's one of those. I thought he popped out, wasn't set. Uh, he may have seen the arm a little bit later. Tough little call against Kentucky. Bradley's got two. Mm. Crawford's got three. Well, minute left. Uh, what are your first half thoughts? Closer than you thought? Well, I, absolutely. I think Kentucky's done exactly the format that they wanted. You know, control the tempo. Don't turn the ball over against the press. Get some good looks on the offensive, but never be in a hurry. Who's trying to signal what they want? Two to get one. Tyler Smith attacks again. Ramar Smith comes up with the assist. They have six points for Tyler Smith. A great call from the bench. Having trouble inbounding here. They you, can run it down now all the way. You want one if you're yeah, Kentucky. Sure. And Stevenson's got to do a great job. See if they get an offense. They got to get over the timeline. John Smith initiates that defense up top. Here's Jasper. Ramar Smith on him. Porter is picked up by Lofton. Chisholm is better. Helping out on any ball screen. Here he comes. Let's see what they do if they trap it. Screen by Stevenson. Switch on defense with Chisholm. This is Bradley. Will he beat the buzzer? Cannot. That ends it. Great right. Kentucky was down by 15 points. Tennessee led 20 to 5 after nine minutes. What a nice comeback by the Wildcats. Sure was. Solid play. Great analysis on the offensive end. And pretty good D on that last trip with Chisholm trapping. Kentucky shooting 50% from the field. And this is their game. As late as you can. And that's some nylon, usually by Bradley. All right, that's the story here from Knoxville. Let's send it to our New York studios. Here is Craig Gumbel. Tennessee led at one time by 15 points, and Kentucky cut that in half. At halftime here in Knoxville, they are honoring the two-time All-America gold medal winner for the Olympics, Ernie Grunfeld, retiring his number, as they did with Bernard Kings a year ago. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA men's basketball will continue after this message. And a word from your local CBS station. Nice little comeback by the Kentucky Wildcats after being down by 15. And Bill, they're winning all the easy points. Tennessee uh, free throws, second chance points, points in the paint, points off turnovers. Uh, that is where Tennessee has made their mark today. Well, you think of this game, the defense has been exceptional, I think. And that starts creating some things. Then they pound it inside. Then they got the offensive rebound, deflected passes. But all of a sudden, Kentucky gets their legs, their confidence. And Billy was like moving around, scheming what can work. And they finally settled on the ball screen late. And it got them involved. Let's take a look at some of the halftime numbers that you have picked up. Brought to you by Mitsubishi. 50% uh, shooting for Kentucky. Yeah, no, no, they're getting good shots and getting them late in the shot clock, but the points off the turnover is something I think they'd like to change a little bit, value the ball. The press hasn't been that much of a factor. Kentucky, when they had their comeback, committed only one turnover. One of the reasons why they came back, and now they're down by just seven at halftime here in Knoxville. And again, our halftime score, another shot here at the Thompson Bowling Arena, built back in 1987, 20th season of UT men's and women's basketball. I don't know if Kentucky has the overall record, but I'm telling you, 10 Southeastern Conference wins since 1992 has got every conference team into the tournament. Plus, RPI is 60. Last year, Stanford made it with an RPI of 65. I think they've got to keep winning, though. And, of course, today would be a heck of a start. As you look on at Billy Gillespie, what a marvelous job he's done as this season has progressed. There is a great story by Greg Doyle in CBSSports.com on Gillespie. After last week's win, last weekend's win, which you watched on CBS against Arkansas, unbeknownst to Billy, there was a 24-hour marathon helping the U.K pediatric oncology clinic on the UK campus in Lexington when he found out he walks over there goes on the stage loses his emotion and pledges $10,000 on the spot 
and was telling the crowd, mainly of, of UK students, how proud he was of their efforts, how even proud he was to be on the same stage with these cancer survivors. It was a, a remarkable Very touchy. story. Now, Billy's a classy guy, and he's really done, as we mentioned, the terrific job, beat Tennessee, Vanderbilt, Arkansas, and Ole Miss. I mean, uh, this is a team that really has shaped up when it counts, the end of the year, and they're talking more and more what you do the last 10, 12 games. Means a lot. Harris had a very good first half. Out there was Stevenson, Crawford playing with three fouls. Ronell Bradley out there, and Derek Jasper. That they is the Wildcat five. They continue to use the clock and stick him with the high ball screen, high five. Against Jawan Smith, it's Bradley. Rebound by Stevenson, offensive board, and a big time flush. And that's the secret. He's been doing that all the last 10 minutes of the first half, getting to the rim after he screens to be in position to dominate on the glass. Finding they can play without Patrick Patterson. Exactly, learning. Getting some swagger. Here's Lofton. Wasn't even recruited by Kentucky, even though he grew up an hour away from Lexington. There's a drive, it's inside. And it is on the Kentucky Wildcats. Uh, Billy was searching and searching, and getting to the rim becomes very important at the end of this because your big guy has to trail. It's two on one. Get a hole. Get in position to dominate. And he does. Harris picks up his second personal foul for Kentucky. Here is Chris Lofton at the line. First meeting against UK this season at five threes with 22 points. That was a loss by Tennessee in that game 72 to 66 with kentucky winning and lexington number one all-time three-point percentage leader at ut all-time in the southeastern conference number seven in three-point percentage but no player is it more from three-point territory in this conference number five all-time in college basketball and do you think he still remembers uh, being slighted by kentucky oh. uh, <laughs> in the back what some plays huh? well he's had some great numbers against them uh, what well, jumps out 46 percent threes is what is shocking and almost 20 points as well ball was kicked and that's why they do the re-inbound two seconds off the shot clock here they go full court pressure again. and they've done a nice job after the first few minutes of getting it in and moving it up the floor They need Crawford to contribute a little bit. I know he's been silenced with foul problems. He's a guy that can, has a medium game. Jasper sneaks one inside to Bradley, working on Chisholm. How about that? Inside now is falling for Kentucky. And, and a freeze, too. The little guy, great hesitation with the ball. And a quick timeout. Now Bruce Pearl not happy with the start here. Cats out of the gate. What an emotional week this has been for Tennessee. Ooh. Nice play here by Ramel Bradley. One of two senior starters in the backcourt for the Cats. Thursday on Survivor, two rivals suddenly find themselves on the same tribe. Who will dominate an all-new Survivor Thursday on CBS? I guess Survivor could be uh, labeled on Kentucky, too, because they have tra uh, trailed in 7-9 conference wins this season in the second half but somehow some way have found a way to win uh, bruce was saying they hang around and particularly on the road that's key and then you steal at the end billy gillespie has come up with manufacturing post up look at this back screen on the top and they run a little slice cut off the out of bounds play was kentucky prepared jasper crawford for three the defense got tangled up the rebound by lofton and picked up by jasper who is sailing on Lamar Smith. Stevenson there with another offensive rebound, a Tennessee foul. Now that's scrappy play by Stevenson. Finding a way to contribute. You know, Jasper a little <laughs> upset. He's done the chippy. Goes awry. But the big fell in the right. And this is the feisty play that you've begun to see with this Kentucky team. And they're very spirited. Came out ready to play in the second half. And Bruce Pearl called the timeout for that very reason. we got to get back in this thing. It's a lot of emotion after a very tough week for the players and the coaching staff. When you consider Memphis, that great win, then go to Vandy, and Vandy, a terrific team, and particularly at home, they're incredible. And then you come back against Kentucky, truly one of their great rivals. Ramar Smith picked up his second personal foul. I don't think people give enough credit to these young kids navigating the, the, oh, the very tough the route. Fouls, oh, right? my gosh. This is the closest it has been since early in the game. There's that slice cut back screen. Oh, is that everything but Chisholm a little hasty and a little too much heat on that delivery. They do it on one side with Lofton. As he goes down and through, they get a back screen on the other. There he is at the end of that. That just unfortunately don't 
get it soft enough. Here comes Prince. Here comes Duke Cruz for Tennessee. Chisholm is out. Remaining is Tyler Smith, Lamar Smith. Where teams have had a hard time inbounding this season against Tennessee, but not Kentucky, only one flub in that category. Well, of course, he, Bruce Pearl was his mentor many ways. Nice extra Great pass. Great pass. Oh, Jasper hits Crawford <laughs> on the other side. Just touched his hands. Now, that full court press by Tennessee, they're very tough on the initial pass, and then they regroup at the other end. He's just got to get it in. Closest since 4-2 to two early in the game. Gillespie wanted to attack. That time they did well. Prince, great footwork here. Nice little step away, but a rebound by Ramon Harris, who's been great on the glass today with four. He has also scored well, especially in the first half. Kentucky start hitting their threes, and that opens up the middle and inside in this half. Absolutely, and here they go back to the initial top of the key with screen as soon as it gets to the rim. And they'll do it again if they have to. Lofton defending Ramel Bradley, a foul called on Chris Lofton. Lofton picks up his third personal foul. We've mentioned before Crawford has got three for Kentucky. Now Vermel able to handle the ball and get into the lane, and they're able to handle the pressure, get it up the sideline here. Just solid play, good ball movement. As they run the floor, everybody fills, and that's just great basketball with the extra touch and a little bit of a crawler at the end. They've just changed the foul. It's on Ramar Smith and not Lofton. They just changed it. Five on the inbounds, and that's what they do. They press you even under your own basket. You'll see them going on the sideline occasionally. One of the few coaches in the country that goes all out. You're better off going all the way to backcourt, throwing it, and starting your offense. That might ignite Tennessee. I just said moments ago, this is what Tennessee has done so well, and Kentucky had handled it so well today. That's the second time they have struggled inbounding the ball. Lofton between two defenders. Splits it. Tough shot. Well defended once he got inside. Look at Prince. Cruz on a hand on it. Off Kentucky. Yeah, right now, Tennessee stepping it up around the glass. And Kentucky doesn't have the bodies without Patterson, but you can just see this pressure on the ball. They face guard, they three-quarter, take away every vision you might have in every passing lane. Tyler Smith will inbound. The defense by Ramon Harris. It's Prince into Crawford. A little oh. rub a dub oh. by Crawford, I think. Four. four. Just never got his feet in the right spot. Four on Crawford. Mm. So playing with uh, Patrick Patterson with a stress fracture discovered by x-rays at about noon on Friday. They're not playing for the rest of the season. He is out. I got Crawford, a guy they're counting on so heavily down the stretch here. They'll take him out and bring in Porter. We did the same thing back in the first half when Crawford had three. Now you've got to be ready now because Prince, not hey, to get two shots here, but on the second one, you've got to be ready. Then one thing about Patterson... Uh, before the game, Bruce Pearl walked over. He saw the sweat sock on Patterson. <laughs> he said, you think he's playing? I'm going to go over and find out. I'm going to ask him. Uh, he was very upset because he prepared as though Patterson were going to be like, coaches are wacky. We know that. Uh, they come out with the release. You know he's injured and out for the year, they feel. I well, always think the practices were like on Friday and Saturday for Gillespie. I'm trying to get by without a guy who the ball always touched every time he had it on offense. There goes the full court pressure again. Porter. The mishandle, a just terrific pursuit by Cruz. The Duke of Earl gets a hand in there. Real tightly in the background there, long time, 47 years. What a gentleman. Watch a lot of Kentucky basketball. Nice defense by Harris. Fucked it out of bounds. So we know Tennessee is going to make the tournament. Where they'll be placed, we don't know. Here are the teams that are under question. Uh, it's giving Vanderbilt, Arkansas, Florida, one of those clubs. Uh, Florida, of course, beat Vanderbilt. Temple at Alabama, maybe not the quality wins, but an excellent record. Lamar Smith. And he had a hand in his face. Yeah. Tough shot. Yeah. Nobody talks about Mississippi State, do they? Well, they had a really good basketball team. You can just see the heat generated, the little buzz in the crowd. Jasper will take it the entire way. And Mike Stevenson inside an offensive foul. Called on Derek Jasper. All he had to do was jump stop. Unfortunately, full Jasper. throttle. Great anticipation Jasper. for the stand-up. Three consecutive Kentucky turnovers. Turnovers hurt him in the first half early. Then they stopped doing it. Cruz got it inside high low. And Stevenson had fallen because of the strength inside. Terrific discard. How about Cruz? Well, Tennessee points off turnovers 
by Kentucky. That has been the difference in the game. They are cashing in every time the Wildcats turn it over. Got to get Bradley involved in anything out top. Jasper squeezing through Prince. He's in a straight jacket. Shot clock is at 13. <laughs> uh, terrific batting with the ball, though, by Jasper. Screen by Stevenson. Defensive switch. They switch again. Tyler Smith is on Bradley. Shot clock at two. Pretty good. What a pass. How about that? He's scooping inside Jasper. And that's his vision's up. He's not looking at the dribble. Great focus and then the slip. Stevenson now has nine. Bradley has nine. Seven for Crawford. If you play good defense, you slow Tennessee down just a little bit. Lofton for three. Uses Bradley screens. defending, yeah. He uses screens great, doesn't he? That's a good part of that reading we're talking about, yep. too. These kids reading. What's going to help them? A lead block in football, a screen in basketball. And they get the pass there on time as well. Well, how many battles over the years have Bradley and Lofton had? Huh? Mm. Sure have. Two seniors. Two tough guys, and he is tough to handle, Bradley, with the dribble. Look at the shot clock again. Yeah, that's right up the rally, but they're patient with it. A lot of work the last two days. Over Lofton, Bradley for three. Look at this kid. Three. Oh, what a pass! What a play! Bradley inside to Stevenson. What hustle and heads up play. Stuck with it. Great vision to boot. What crit by Kentucky this afternoon. There's their flex. Tyler Smith. They rebound settled. by Stevenson. Huge game, 11 points and 7 rebounds. Kevin, they settle. That's where they gain control, slow it down. They run their baseline bumps, but the quick jack negated it. That's the high ball screen, the double fist. They got two this time. Double right there. And a quick double on Jasper. Look at Harris. He has scored well all day and scores again. He counted for two and a foul. He had to fight Bradley for it first. Uh, they had too many people in the area. But Harris with the dribble, and it's been Kentucky using the bounce beautifully. Here's the hustle, the heads up play, the focus. Bradley, who's been on top of his game. Send it in, big fella. A 6 nothing run by the Wildcats. The game's first tie after Kentucky trailed by 15. The last time Tennessee lost at home was back in March 106 against Kentucky. Randolph Morris led the Cats with 22. Rajon Rondo, 16, helped give Kentucky a lead late. Time winding down. Volunteer down by two. A Watson miss. Three at the buzzer. Kentucky wins 80-78. You can see this 30 consecutive home game winning streak for Tennessee. But I'll tell you what, coming into this game, Kentucky had a lot of confidence, even though perhaps their best player is out for the season. Uh, the, the ability, I think, defensively was prevalent early by Bruce guys. They got away from their inside game, and Kentucky just on the offensive end, analyzed. They searched a little. Billy got them into different sets. They've done a great job with the, guy, the big man at the top of the key, turning the corner. If it's not there, bringing it back out. Ball reversal, making Tennessee work. Big thing now, Tennessee's got to hammer it inside. No Patterson, take advantage. Harris has a career-high 12. Kentucky has their first lead of the game. Kentucky in the paint, second half, plus seven. They were minus nine in the first half. Stevenson, eight points for the Wildcats in the second half alone. He's been terrific. Bradley's been great. He sure has. Solid run the show. Tyler Smith could be a factor with Jasper on him if they use him inside. I think the committee will take note of this game, huh? The way Kentucky playing on the road against the number one team in college basketball. They don't miss much. Uh -uh. They got people here. Jawan Smith inside. Bradley from behind. The fight. Chisholm gobbles it in. Prince, I think Prince got it. Maybe Tyler Smith. They were going up to the rim. You get anything around the rim, your bigs can take over. That sets up their pressure. They got it out. Run out. Home run. Bradley will be into the rim. Oh, what a play by Tyler Smith. Spectacular lock away. Oh, not intercepted, but Kentucky. It's Chester the other way. Two on one. Into Smith defending again. How about his effort? Is that extraordinary? Stevenson inside. Again, saved by Smith. Great block. Three on three. Jawan Smith by Porter. Oh. And he throws it away. Almost with Crawford on the bench with four fouls. 
for Kentucky. How about that? Now, well, this is up Tennessee's alley. This run out sets up an opportunity, but look at the effort by Tyler Smith. All out pursuit. And this is just one of those you, you don't envision the defender being that big and almost a steal off Bradley in the backcourt. Wow, but again, though, Kevin, the speed of play favors Tennessee. You get one of those woo-woo situations. Mm -hmm. That's right down Bruce's alley. What a week they've had. Number one Memphis, top 20 Vanderbilt. Now the rival Kentucky, all mm -hmm. in the same week. Wow, the challenges, and emotionally, too. When you mentioned young people, how did they respond to it? Of course, Bruce, the master motivator. Vanderbilt was great that night. Foster was shooting them from downtown Nashville. And double high. Bradley, Porter, across the lane, Stevenson. He's had a great second half. Working on Chisholm, who drew the foul for Tennessee. You know, Stevenson had good numbers in high school. And, of course, once you come up a step and you got a guy like Patterson, all of a sudden you're not the option inside. Now he's playing with a little more confidence. They're giving him a ball low. He will do some things on the turnaround jumper. Kentucky began the season. You take a look at the free throw comparison, how good Kentucky is and how the... Volunteers struggle. But Kentucky began the season six and seven as we have a chance to kind of reflect on what they've been through and where they're headed. Where did things turn for Kentucky? They were 99 when they went to Georgia, won there, and they've won four in a row, and nine of them we said as of the last Well, 10. the other day, talking to Billy on the phone with Jasper's miraculous recovery certainly has to be part of it. And all of a sudden, they bonded. He gave them a new dimension. And I mentioned Stevenson. He averaged double triple doubles three years in the last two years in high school excuse me approaching 12 to play here in the second half Powell has come in uh, he would have shot that early in the year it's the look he's got to take it there it is it's a three and it's rebounded by Ramel Bradley Howell has been in a horrible horrible shooting slump yeah, that's what he's known for too Bradley for three Stevenson fights for it. Chisholm knocks it off to Howell. Great check out. Jordan Howell the other way. Gives it off to Chris Lofton. Picked up by Porter. Ooh. Foul on Porter. Wow, that great defensive position, even with the effective bounce with the left by Lofton. Great challenge. Porter picks up his first for the Kentucky Wildcats. How about Rumpton. this one? They're the number one defensive team in the Southeastern Conference is Tennessee with plays oh, like this. Nothing easy with Smith around. Here in Knoxville, number one Tennessee is down by one. Coming up next, number 12 Indiana against Tom Izzo Spartan. Number 15, they'll play that in East Lansing. Then UCLA at Arizona. Some of you will see Villanova at Louisville. Kentucky has outscored Tennessee 17-9 in the second half. 13 points for Stevenson, most in the second half. And 12 points, a career high for Ramon Harris. 47% shooting for the game for Kentucky. No one in double figures for Tennessee as of yet. You know, every coach has everybody do all the drills, no matter what position you are, 15, 14, 13, all the way down. Ramon Harris feeds the post, does a nice job, but he can take people off the bounce. He finishes without Patterson. You find out what talent kids have, and he has really stepped beautifully. And Stevenson, another guy, seven rebounds, I mean, real solid play. You mentioned the 13 points. There are some Valentines out there. <laughs> Lofton, the former Kentucky, state of Kentucky, Mr. Basketball. Pretty good. Kentucky has not had a significant win on the road this season. Not one. Huh. Well, this would be the start, huh? <laughs> Against number one? Yeah. This, kid, this kid is some athlete, too. Known as a football player as well. Making them sets up the pressure. They do the run out again. Pretty good coverage this time. They get it out. Boy, it's been difficult inbounding for every team. Against Tennessee, Brian Williams has come in for the Volunteers. Josh Tabb is in the game as well with Prince, Tyler Smith, Lofton. That is a Volunteer 5. Jasper and Harris, Stevenson and Porter. Porter taking the place of the four fouled Crawford. And here with the ball is Ramel Bradley. Halfway through this second half, those are the guys on the floor. They're not doing anything until under 10. And here they go. The double high. Jasper squeezes oh. it inside with the backdoor try and the tip in try. Three's a charm, perhaps, for Stevenson. No, a Tennessee foul. And Stevenson, his inability to finish caused the foul. What a great play. Here's what Kentucky has done in the second half. Enough action for you. Doing a better job on the glass. 
attacking late the shot clock. Their pressure defense, they're getting the 50-50 balls. All of a sudden, they're back in this. Harris picked up that foul for Kentucky, so it was a change. Now Harris at the other end gets the loose ball, vacuums it in for the Wildcats. So when it looked like Tennessee was going to draw the foul, their defense paid a dividend, and it went on Harris. And then he does the same thing. He returns the favor at the other end for the Wildcats. And they set him up for a nice back cut with the overzealous extension defensively. They lift people and step and go. Well, that's a long pass against Tennessee. They love deflections. Porter into Prince. Smart play. Shot clock at four. Jasper guarded by Tam. Inside to Bradley oh. around the big 6-10 oh. center. Williams, a great pass with a great finish. Bradley finishes amongst the trees. Great delivery. Jasper has a season high seven assists. There's a great throw in there by Tyler Smith. He's got eight. The average is 13. Well, he's so good at using the dribble. Look at Bradley again, squeezing out. Boy, the impact of Dr. Tom Davis on Bruce is exactly what they used to do at Iowa at BC. This one. His son Keno at Drake. And of course, Gary Williams at Maryland. Big influence in a lot of careers, Dr. Tom. Tennessee's going to take out four players in the next dead ball. Kentucky working with a short lineup. Shot clock down to seven. Tab is on Jasper. Ooh. Bradley has got Tyler Smith. He's got to fire one second to shoot. He's done Foul. It. He's so good. Oh, my goodness. That ball fake and lock. I always say the world, Walt Frazier move. And Bruce has a legitimate... Right, he thought it looked it, like it didn't. It? It's the horn, though, on a shot clock. It's the horn that counts. He's going to get three free throws. Tell you what, that's uh -oh. right. Uh, but it, you know, it, it's and he's frustrated. But it is the horn. Second time this season, Kentucky has faced a number one team. They did it back in December against then number one, North Carolina. We always talk about Tennessee's defense, as we'll see it here again. And it's surely the clock was at zero. But what about Kentucky's defense? Number three in the conference and points allowed number two in field goal defense in the Southeastern Conference. Well, that's what Billy brought to this team. You saw that at Texas a and UTEP. He was with Bill Self at Illinois. They're very aggressive, but how about Bradley How smart to dupe the defenders to jump. He does that beautifully. Usually he does it at the foul line. Late in the shot clock, you've got to be under control of your Tennessee. You don't attack space, elevate, you've got inches over it. Jawan Smith, Ramar Smith, and Duke Cruz have just checked in for the Tennessee Volunteers. Tab is out. J.P. Prince is gone. Rebound by Jawan. Now here comes Ramon. Chisholm remains. Lofton is in the game. Lofton drawing two. Nice play. Ramar Smith. Hooks to remove. Picked up by Stevenson. He's all over. How is that number eight? He's got ten rebounds. Oh, ten rebounds. Couple of offense in there. What a job Billy Gillespie has done coaching this team for this game without their best player. Utter confidence in his guys. They've shown him. And a push off by Jasper. Shot clock at nine. Oh, no. Deflected. That's off Kentucky. Had a good luck. Free traffic. Nobody in mind. It's got to be two somebody when you make that pass. They're going to bring in A.J. Stewart, who is a freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. He'll take the place of Stevenson in this tie game at 47. Stevenson needs a quick breather. What a game he has played. He needs a respirator. Yes. He's to make that little foul line jumper, though. Oh, he has been heroic. The lead changes. What a game. Nice Porter with a nice deflection. Go back to that shot again by Ramel Bradley and see if we can hear a whistle or a buzzer. Simultaneous, I mean, it's uh, judgment of the official. They can't review it. Offensive foul has just been called. 
And it was on Tennessee. It was on Lofton. He picked up his third. While we're in that replay, they had a quick inbound and a quick offensive foul. So Lofton's got three. Crawford has been spending a lot of time on the Kentucky bench today without four personal fouls. And that is off of Jawan Smith. here years ago no influence by the fans it is entirely different the buzz hairstyle quarter nice look oh and Brantley, the lead pass chisholm hits him he's so smart duke cruz got him cruz picks up the foul he knows when to release it number four and into your living room hold on to the china <laughs> he is remarkable. I think, you know, look at him. Body search, get the hit, wants to go to the free throw line, and stick up. It's Michael Porter, who has now taken the place of Crawford and playing some very important minutes for Kentucky, was recruited for college football at USC by Pete Carroll. He is from Modesto, but decided he loved, after his team won a state championship in basketball, Porter decided that he wanted to play some basketball. Where else would he want to play but at the University of Kentucky? as Jasper will check out. And Jared Carter will come in. He is a junior from Georgetown, Kentucky. He is seven foot two. As you mentioned, Porter against Auburn, he's stuck a couple of threes, and they, they know he can bring the bell. So Tennessee's got to be careful, quickly on a kick out. Biggest lead right now for Kentucky after trailing by 15 back in the first half. And Chisholm can take his guy. Look at him get to the rim. Here. Tyler Smith with a great drive. This and caught it for two for the time. This kid's amazing. We saw him do it from the top. He analyzes off the dribble exceedingly well. Just understands which hand to dribble with. The traffic goes by. The left and the delivery. The collapsing defense tardy. Wow, and he drags a couple. If that didn't go in, plenty of white shirts at the rim. Carter picked up a foul, and Carter is out. They're going to take him out very quickly. Stevenson is in. Jasper is in. Bradley in there with Harris and Porter. They always pick on the big guy, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't break a sweat. We've had eight lead changes all coming in the last six minutes of this game. And the relentless pressure, tighten it up. Initial trap, if you can beat it, you might get something easy. Harris, a career high today. Lofton gets him in the mismatch. Lamar Smith is on Brandon. Four guys on the perimeter can beat you with the dribble. Well, look how far out Kentucky is. But you know what? With the way they run the clock, this doesn't bother them. I don't mind. Almost reminds me of Princeton years ago yeah. and Pete Carrillo. Very comfortable under five. Such patience. Yep. Clock at six. Bradley is him. No place to go except the Harris. The horn yep. should be the there. Is the horn the that time yep. you can hear her boost Shot applause. Yep. A sarcastic round of applause by the band leader. Strike it up in Tennessee, Bruce. 7.23 to play in a great game with number one leading by one. Tennessee by one, what catches your eye? Well, these two areas, you know, they're up to six and the five. And, of course, this guy has just been magnificent. Unbelievable. You know, stepping up. That's what Billy expected. Well, you talked to him not only before the game, but just before tip-off, too. Well, just before the national anthem, he said, you know, Kevin, the two of you came in there, you didn't say, how about a title? <laughs> And I threw you under the bus because you weren't there. I said, yeah, I told <laughs> Kevin he should have asked the question. Uh, but that's how competitive he is. You know, he said, come on, I'm in this thing. I've got a chance to win it. I think that's what he's proven to his players. Well, if they win, this will be their, if Kentucky wins, this will be their second win over Tennessee. So they'd have a tiebreaker against them. And they could go on and really control what they want to do, especially, obviously, in the Eastern Division of the Southeastern Conference. All right, Crawford has come back in for Kentucky playing with four fouls. With Jasper, Harris, Stevenson, and Bradley, the Kentucky Five. Here is Ramar Smith to Jawan Smith to Tyler Smith. He's Look at on Jasper with a great court screw move. Tap in, shoots him, puts the, him. the body bump, the belly roll. Once the dribbler gets to the rim, get your guy under the tin. Bradley gets it. How exhausting as it is for an opponent of Tennessee to always just inbound the ball. Well, it's threatening every trip. You got to step and cut and deliver on time. Jasper a screen. Switch on defense. Jasper's been quiet this second half. One of these trips are going to bite them early. Look at this. What? Thank goodness he's athletic, huh? 
Shot clock at seven. Where's the penetration? Nowhere. A three by Bradley. Oh. Oh. Wow. Stepping up big time. 17 points in this game. For Bradley. Nice the chisel. Oh, it was a great yes. double team chisel. How bad chisel too? Very alert. Squeezing the apple. Chisholm's got nine. Uh, Lofton again draws a lot of attention, opens up people, even if he's not scoring. Six to play. I think they're ripe for a back cut, Tennessee. They're getting hungry on the wings. Lamar Smith is on, Ramel Bradley. Stevenson a screen. Got to look for it off the bounce quickly. Down to four. Bradley. Jasper for three over Smith. Oh! Oh, my goodness! Wow. Kentucky has recaptured the lead with another triple. Two daggers from the perimeter. Nine lead changes. And that's frustrating defensively. You start to gamble. And you work the shot wow. clock all the way down. That is a foul. It is on the Kentucky Wildcats. Think of this, how low they run the shot clock, and you talk about being deflated defensively after two big-time daggers. Well, they conserve energy when you think of it. The next possession, they do the same thing. Drive, get two to pinch, get the puppy set. Jasper sticking it. A couple of daggers. Jasper just picked up his fourth personal foul. 17 from Bradley, 13 from Stevenson. Harris with 12. That's a Kentucky score. Tyler Smith has 11 with four rebounds. And Chris Lofton has 11 with a rebound and six assists. Another time. NCAA March Madness on Demand is back this year. You can watch every game from the NCAA Championship live online for free. Avoid the lines on game day by signing up for your free VIP pass now. It's all at NCAA.com. And Kevin, how about Tyler? 10 points, 13 and a half rebounds the last four games. Is he a valuable contributor? And perfect from the line today, three of three. Uh, Tennessee is plus three, excuse me, they'll plus three the volunteers at the free throw line in points. Bruce works as hard in the trap as they do. Approaching five to play. Making sure they don't get the five count. Threaten, and then back it off. You can't keep making those deep threes. I don't think that you got to do something going to the rim. Well, you think it would open up because you would loosen up that defense, but that's not been the case. Well, Tennessee's been solid, forcing tough shots. Crawford. How about this? I tell you, Billy calls timeout. What a game. Perimeter and the body control plus the strength to make that shot off the bounce, extraordinary by Crawford. Lead with foul problems, an answer for Kentucky. See the number one team in college basketball led by 15 in the first half, dominating with easy points. Kentucky has swung it around in the second half. We've had seven ties, we've had 11 lead changes. What has Kentucky done for the people that have just joined us to, to stay in this game, come back from the big deficit, and now, as we can see, lead by one without their best player? Well, Billy told us before the game they want to control tempo, use a lot of the shot clock, attack the press when it does show, but be intelligent in your approach. And they have exhausted Tennessee with late shot clock magic. A couple of threes and a pull up by Crawford. Tennessee is shooting for the game 41%. Kentucky 49% from the field. Everybody backing off the bigs. Oh, I thought, what are they going to time out? Because everybody's confused. The sloppy defense has really affected Tennessee. Kentucky controlling the ball a little bit better. Down. Tonight on 60 Minutes, a new weapon could change the war in Iraq. See how it stops crowds without killing. That's tonight on CBS on 60 Minutes. Coming up next, great battle in the Big Ten from East Lansing. Number 15, Michigan State. Number 12, Indiana. 
We talk about navigating the ups and downs of a season. What about the Hoosiers? Uh, unbelievable. Uh, Dan Dockage now in control. A nice play out of the timeout. That's preparation. Chisholm locked his guy, cleared that left side. Ramar Smith comes up with the basket. He now has six. Tennessee by one. Approaching four to play. That middle, it will not open. I thought Bradley was going to take advantage there. That's what they're going to do once in a while, I think. Lull him to sleep and then blow by. Double high again. Single digits on the shot clock. Harris has had a career day scoring. Nice deal. Great steal indeed by Jerron Smith. He can get to the rim. And to Harris, knocked away. Stevenson's defense there as well. And here comes Jasper. Oh, and to Crawford. Luck. He turns it over. Turnover has killed Kentucky in the first half. They've been bitten twice in a row here. Well, it's interesting. They want to control tempo, but you've got to have a wide open look on that kind of a pass. Bring it back out and run clock. Oh, Tyler Smith into two. Tyler Smith puts it in. Bookends there. 15. Chisholm on the one side, Smith on the other. I think Kentucky's running on fumes right now. His guys have played a lot of minutes. Ramel Bradley in particular is just gasping for air. He's staying off the ball, which could be dangerous unless he gets it late. He'll put up a three. He was not fouled. Rebound by Chisholm. And now Tennessee slows it. They're going to eat some point. Back screen. Pop. Look at this play. Good catch by Smith. Jawan Smith. That was big. Huge. They got numbers. Stevenson has collected a career-high 11 rebounds today for the Wildcats. Now I think they have to go a little bit earlier. See if he can get some offensive rebound. Use the high ball screen. Get Stevenson to the rim. This match against Chisholm Bradley with the try. Oh, what a tough goal. Everything but. <laughs> Pretty but ineffective. They've hit the wall. Yeah, yeah, all of a sudden, Bradley's gasping. They've hit the wall. Now they slow it down, and this sometimes is tough to get charged up late in the shot clock. And I had, he's just exhausted. Didn't want to chase this guy. Tennessee by three. Bradley picks up his third. Tyler Smith with a great move inside. Part of his 15-point day. We have 141 remaining in regulation here. Kentucky has gone scoreless the last three minutes and two seconds after they led 57-56, hitting three consecutive shots, a couple of threes. This timeout comes at a good time for Kentucky because they are operating, as we said before, on fumes right now. No movement in that huddle. It's a good time for Bradley to gather himself because he's going to have to be the guy. Uh, that high ball screen has been effective with a single or a double. They're going to have to be forced to score quickly. And the big thing now, I think, for Tennessee, Lofton, a great free throw shooter, set up your press, get back, and force Kentucky to use clock. And then counter that, I think it's going to be tough for Tennessee to milk the clock themselves. They're not accustomed to that, although they can be patient with their flex offense. Number two free throw shooter in the Southeastern Conference, Chris Lofton. Puts it in. Love those home ribs. Got a couple of big free throws against then number one Memphis last Saturday. Yep, they're all here celebrating what has been a wonderful career for this reigning SEC player of the year. Last year led the conference in scoring. Even numbers aren't quite as good this year, but he's been important. Even numbers, y'all. Only need those a quick hit. Let's see if they go for it. Oh, another my. steal, another turnover, and that may be it. What preparation by Tennessee. That's their slap back leave play where they get the quick hitter on a jumper. What heart by Kentucky oh. today. What heart with such little time oh. repair for the main ingredient, Patrick Patterson. Lofton with the drive. Wow. Oh. Oh. That's the dagger. A kiss. Some urgence. A little guy. Crawford the other way and faces the double. Now see that offense helps him on defense. Jasper a three. Oh. Good time hit. 
From outside by Derek Jasper, and it's a three-point game. With 59.8 to play, the Cats are still alive, but barely. Lofted right down the middle of the boulevard. In just a few seconds, up in East Lansing, tipping off the Hoosiers and the Spartans. That comes up next on CBS. Great game from the Big Ten. Resetting here in Knoxville in a very emotional week for Bruce Pearl as you take a look at our game reset. Beating number one, losing to in-state rival Vanderbilt a couple days later, coming back and taking on their rival tennis at Tennessee playing Kentucky today. I mean, they've gone through so much. Kentucky goes man to man. They will trap on occasion. Let's see what they do here. Here they come with it. Oh, you had a chance. Smith to Smith. Javon had it rejected by Stewart, the freshman for Kentucky, out of bounds. It is Kentucky's ball. And I, this is one where I think you go for the two, and sometimes you get the three out of it. Good, aggressive pursuit of the basketball. Great shot block. Stevenson back in the game for Stewart. They play Stewart for defense. Stevenson comes in right now. Trying to find pockets of rest is this Kentucky team. Gotta go for it. Seven second difference, game clock and shot clock. And they get the timeout because they're disorganized. Heady play by Bill Gillespie. Timeout, Kentucky. Our Chevrolet players of the game, Perry Stevenson with the great numbers, the double-double for the Kentucky Wildcats, and Tyler Smith with 15 for Tennessee. Recognition of their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund, Chevy and American Revolution. So Kentucky is called time, 21 seconds in the shot clock and 28 in the game clock. Yeah, Kevin, I, I still think go for the two, stretch the game out, get the foul, be ready. This is a time for Crawford, I think, off the dribble. Sometimes they screen down, give it to him, he can turn the corner in traffic, get the old-fashioned three. But always, when you drive and draw, the possibility of a good, clean three look is available. Kentucky has made three of the last four three-pointers. Jasper, double screen the corner. Bradley, Jasper, sure. three over left, and it is short. It's caught by Ramar Smith. He is quickly fouled by Harris. Got a pretty good look. Just didn't get enough air under it. Nice double screen, set it up. Once again, being in the right spot by Tennessee. Here's the double, get the look, and just right here, smart. Get your man, check him out, be in the right position to seal the deal. What a heads-up play by Ramar Smith. First free throws of the game coming up right now. No. Way off. And they hold Stevenson. What a silly foul that would have been by Tyler Smith. Need to, got to get the quick, quick three now. Got to take it. Crawford for the tie. Stevenson. Tennessee has survived. What a game. Oh. Extraordinary. What, what heart by Kentucky. Whew. Well, they did everything they could to get themselves back into this game. Crawford with great presence to pick it up. A rattler and a little heartache in Lexington. But almost a chance for the last one, but no question it was after the lights on the scoreboard, double zero lights and horn. Uh, you are right. A lot of Valentines on this club, and of course Tennessee prevailed as well. Great effort by their team. How about the win for Bruce Pearl and number one Tennessee? Coming up next, game two of our triple header, Indiana and Michigan State. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the Men's NCAA Basketball Championship. Good afternoon from Knoxville.